So we're going to be calculating the distance from a point to a vector equation of a line. So we're going to find the distance to this vector equation from the origin. Now before I get started on this, I really need to draw some pictures and make sure that your understanding of a vector equation is rock solid. Now a vector equation of a line is just this, it's a line. Now this line is moving through three dimensions in the i, j and k components. I've just drawn it moving in an arbitrary direction. But this vector equation is this vector equation right here. And I really want you to understand what this i plus 2j plus 2k is, what this thing is here, but also what a vector equation actually is. Now, this is the starting position vector. And the starting position vector is a vector drawn from the origin to the line, right? Now, you need to understand that the vector equation of a line is not actually a physical line. What it actually is, is an infinite number of vectors drawn to that line. So, we start at time zero. Now, at time zero, this bit doesn't exist. So what we have is a single line like that. Now at time 1, what we have is a new vector somewhere further along the line. And then what we have at time 2 is some other vector further along the line. And at time 3 we have other, some other one. And there. And negative time, t, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, we have these ones here. So, a vector equation of a line is not a line. It's an infinite number of vectors moving along there, and the vector equation of the line describes the endpoints of all of those vectors. So, now that we have that cleared up, we can solve this question relatively easily. So what we're looking for is the distance to this vector equation from the origin, and it's implied that that's the shortest distance, right? And the shortest distance is going to be this one here, where the distance, oh sorry, the vector from the origin to the vector equation has a right angle. And you should immediately think vectors, right angles, dot products. And so what we need are two vectors. Now, talking about what we were talking about before with a vector equation being a whole number of, of vectors, an infinite number of vectors, this vector here is R with respect to T. It is one of those vectors. And if we just knew what this T value should be to make it a right angle, we'd be in business. Now, this one here, this vector in this direction, has, is parallel to negative i minus 3j, because that's the direction that our vector equation is traveling in. So now I have two vectors, r with respect to t and d, and because I want them to be perpendicular, that means that their dot product would need to be equal to zero. All right, so this is relatively straightforward now. So to find the dot product, I need to multiply the i components together, multiply the j components together, multiply the k components together. Easy. So to do that, I just need to rearrange this so that I have my i components together, my j components together, and my k components together. We've done that plenty. So this bit here is this bit here, and then this is this bit here. Um, and now I'm going to multiply this by this, this by this, and this by zero, and add them together. Just make sure you know what you're doing here. It's this number here, which is negative 1, times this number here, which is 1 minus t. Uh, and then we're adding this number here, negative 3, multiplied by this number here, 2 minus 3t. And this number here, which is 0, times 2, which is 0. So just jumping through a few hoops here, we now know that 0 is equal to negative 7 plus 10t. And rearranging that, we'll get a value for t. So now I have a value for t where this vector and this vector are perpendicular. So if I sub 7 over 10 into r with respect to t, into this vector equation, I'll now know what that vector equation is. There it is here. This vector equation is the vector that is um, perpendicular to the line from the origin. And finding the distance of that is really, really trivial. A little bit of 3D Pythagoras, an answer, and you can leave it there. I just wanted to show you that that's approximately 2.02 units. All right, so I found the distance from that vector from the origin, but what if I wanted to find the distance from a different point? 
And here we have a different point. Now you might want to take a moment to pause it and try to draw a picture of this scenario. The line, the origin, the other point, and how we're going to find that perpendicular line. So here's just the beginnings of it. We've got our vector equation here. We have a line, which is our starting position. So that's i plus 2j plus 2k. That's our origin there. Now this is our point Q, which is 1, 3, 2. And what we're trying to find is uh, this vector here, which I guess we'll call Q. Now, how can I find that vector? Well, there is something I can do that's kind of sneaky here, because I could get from Q to this point here, let's call it point P, I could get from Q to point P by going from Q to O, and then from O to P, right? This vector plus this vector would be equal to this vector. And I'm going to be able to find both of those vectors because this vector here is simply vector Q, O, which is going to be easy to find. And this vector here is R with respect to T at some point T. I just don't know what that point T is yet. So if I can find that, then I'll be in business. So first thing I'm going to do is find an expression for vector Q. And that's going to be equal to vector Q, O plus vector R, T. Now vector Q, O is relatively straightforward. It's the reverse of vector O, Q, which is I, 3, J plus 2, K. So it's negative i, uh, negative 3j, negative 2k. And r with respect to t is relatively straightforward as well. It's just that thing there. Now if I group all of that together, I have a single vector, uh, vector equation that is. And now that is that. And now I can use a similar procedure to what I did in the previous example, which is a dot product of Q and D because they need to be perpendicular. So the dot product of that is going to have to be equal to zero. Now, I don't want to confuse you too much, but I do want to expose you to an alternative notation here. So zero is equal to D dot Q, where D is this thing here, negative one, negative three, dot Q is this thing here, negative T, negative 1, negative 3t, and now I do my dot product just by multiplying this by this and adding this times this. Now after that I can simplify it and solve it for t. Now t is equal to negative 3 on 10, and if you're thinking about the previous example you might say, well I know what to do from here, I'm going to shove that into this equation here. Mm -mm -mm. If you put this into r with respect to t, you're not going to get the vector you want, which is vector q you're going to get the vector r with respect to t. So if you want vector q, you're going to have to put that t into your equation for q, which is this one right here. And so putting negative 3 tenths into this equation will tell you that the vector equation of q is 3 tenths i minus 1 tenth j. Now, of course, the question didn't ask for the vector equation of q. It asked for the distance from this point to this vector equation. So now we just do our distance formula stuff. Which leads us to an answer of root 10 on 10. Relatively small number there. Okay, uh, that is calculating the distance from a point to a vector equation of a line. You really need to get comfortable drawing pictures, but you also need to be comfortable with the idea of what a vector equation really and truly is. Otherwise, none of that's going to make sense.